Welcome to Trending in Education. This is Mike Palmer. It's August 2022. We made it. Good on us. We're still going strong. 490 episodes. Looking forward to getting to 500. Doing some relaunching and some looking back in the process heading in. Hopefully folks have been enjoying that. I, I certainly have. We just released our most downloaded episode as part of the Best of Trending in Ed feed. That was Dr. Rich Milner out of Vanderbilt University down in Tennessee. Uh, shout out to Rich, who's doing really great work down there. That was a conversation about opportunity gaps back from the summer of 2020. Really worth listening to. Also released as part of our Future of Work series, my conversation with Beth Porter, who's the co-founder of Esme Learning. I'm looking forward to getting her back on the show again soon. Those are phenomenal. And then on top of that, I interviewed Al Kingsley on his way to that coveted refrigerator magnet that just went out in this feed last week. And we're starting to hit our home stretch. There's some really great interviews on the horizon. I'm looking forward to doing some more retrospectives, a little more like this, as the year winds up, as the season winds up, and we start to look at the fall, which winds up being back to school season. We all think about education differently. We're more aware of trends in that time frame. And then you know, crossing my fingers, I do think the pandemic framing at a macro level is going to start to subside. Hopefully the numbers will coincide with that. This reminds me very much of an idea that a friend of the show, Steve Jordan's talked about called the great snapback that while we were in the midst of COVID, it felt like that frame, you know, masking, social distancing, all the new conventions we adopted. It felt like they would prevail for the for the foreseeable future, and uh, clearly that was not the case because we're in the foreseeable future now, and folks are snapping back. I feel it myself. I think it's a natural instinct, and that's really what Steve was talking about. But then also, it's an instinct that we need to push back against a little bit. In some ways, hold the ground that was gained by being forced in directions we might not have moved otherwise had the pandemic not happened. So anyway, it's been a pretty reflective time for me as we're wrapping up season six. You know, we typically start each season with the Gartner hype cycle. We'll be doing that again this fall, assuming Gartner gets a hype cycle out there. We'll talk about it. So be on the lookout for that. And then that takes me more to where are we now this week, which to start, you know, it's been about a week now since the passing of three luminaries, Bill Russell, Nichelle Nichols, Lieutenant Uhura from the original Star Trek, and Vin Scully, the voice of the Dodgers, and I would argue the voice of baseball, he called the... Mookie Wilson ground ball through Bill Buckner's legs that for me will forever be the defining moment of my baseball memory. And there are some glimmers in flushing. The Mets are looking pretty good. But my personal baseball proclivities aside, I was struck by the dignity of those three people, whether it's Bill Russell withstanding a lot of the abuse and racism and challenges he faced while leading the Celtics to 11 championships, two as coach, the first black head coach in a major American sport. Bill Russell was a lesson in dignity. I had the great honor of meeting him. He met many people, didn't sign autographs, but he would look you in the eye. He would really talk to you for a moment. I met him at a mentoring event about 20 years ago. I was struck first off at how really tall he was and also how dignified he was. 
he stayed close to the game and he stayed close to the protests that were happening. He was a very public supporter of Colin Kaepernick's protest while he was in his 80s. You know, this guy, basketball player in his 80s, taking a knee, says something. As I get older, taking a knee means something in that it's going to be a bigger deal to get up and it may not be the most comfortable position while I'm down. And uh, and he's still got plenty of years on myself. So it's impressive that he would do these things at a time when other folks would, you know, be playing golf, enjoying their life. Uh, I'm sure he did his share of that as well. But Bill Russell was striking for his dignity and his leadership. The same for Nichelle Nichols, who among her many Star Trek fans, one was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, which is another amazing story, another place where you can understand the impact of media on the culture. But it was Martin Luther King who encouraged Nichelle to stick with her role as Uhura when she was a little bit lost, not sure what she was doing, not sure whether she was making an impact. It's surprising the people you might reach, and it really might just be that one person who you reach who makes that impact. She reached Dr. King, and he conveyed to her, continue to do it. And I got to say, you know, she made a strong impression on me as a young kid. It was nice to see the diversity on the bridge. When I think hailing frequencies, I think Lieutenant Uhura, live long and prosper. And it's sad to see him go, but it is impressive to see them go with dignity throughout and that was certainly true of Vince Scully as well. So I'm going to try to think of them as part of our spiritual ancestors at this point, try to convey some of what they've done in their careers, what they did with their lives, and hopefully try to shoulder surf off their grace and dignity as we take Training in Ed across the finish line in the 500th episode, and then we kick off our seventh season, which is quite a span of time when you think about it. So that's what's on the horizon for today's show. I think we're going to keep it relatively brief. In addition to the in memoriam that we just kicked off with, the big news in education, the, the thing that really is getting people all abuzz these days is Raj Chetty and his research has come out with something new now. This is now focusing on economic mobility, as his research typically does. He's a big data guy, does a lot of analytics, really cutting edge stuff. Rajchetty.com is his website. They just released new research on the importance of friendship and friendship as it cuts across economic strata, how when folks are towards the bottom end of the socioeconomic curve, and they are exposed to folks who are higher up the curve throughout their lives. They are much more likely to see social mobility, economic mobility, and growth in their lives. Interestingly, it also points out that at the tippity top, generally the area that would be considered the 1%, that there is the least interaction, the most I'm going to say it's segregation in that, you know, like only really becomes friends with like or to a much larger extent. So I guess it's arguing for folks in those elite corners of the world to figure out ways to engage with others, ways for their children to engage with others. Arguably, there's some thinking and planning, whether consciously or otherwise, that that is not really the objective. But it does at the same time speak to the power of things like public education when folks actually are opting into public education, that that does open up the opportunity for folks to become friends across social, economic divides, ethnic divides, whatever, racial divides. All those co complexities start to subside when you just get to know people as who they are. You know, the mere Exposure effect is the term from psychology that this is an example of. The more you're exposed to folks who have 
different backgrounds than you, the more likely you are to become tolerant of them, to beyond become tolerant to them, to just connect to them in the multifaceted ways that we can connect with other people. And then that deepens your understanding, gets you past that surface stereotyping. Raj Chetty's work, definitely worth checking out. His most recent research is getting some attention. It's something that certainly speaks to the importance of diversity and inclusion and, you know, getting folks, teachers who are of diverse backgrounds, whether it's students actually encountering folks from different backgrounds. All these things are really important, ultimately, in building a more equitable society. So it's nice to see that this is getting some press. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about today was I did finish another book. I always like to include some book recommendations when I get the chance. This one is called The 90s. It's by Chuck Klosterman, who is a writer, a columnist in different magazines over the years. He's been on a bunch of podcasts over the years. He's a interesting thinker, talks a lot about music, culture, sports, media, movies, literature, you name it, but cultural critic, you know, cultural thinker. He is generally of the Gen X age range, which I certainly ascribe to as much as anyone can peg a Gen Xer as anything. We are at least members of that generation. He wrote a book called The 90s, which I would definitely recommend to folks who are in Gen X, because it takes you back to the 90s in a very powerful way really anyone who has any affinity to the 90s. And I've talked in the past about how there are certain retro windows that come into vogue from time to time. It's usually about 20 to 30 years ago. So it would make sense that by now we're starting to think about the 90s in a more reflective, thoughtful way. It is, to Clusterman's point, somewhat of the end of history in a lot of ways. Things really did take a sharp turn in the 2000s. You forget how crazy it was with Y2K, the Gore-Bush election, and then 9-11, all happening in rapid succession, which then quickly turned into the Bush presidency, which turned into a new geopolitical framing and and really what we remember since, in some ways. And then in 2020, which we're still kind of in the midst of, another pivot has happened. So it is interesting that we've seen these 20-year epochs emerge and that they shift. It is very reminiscent of the work of Strauss Howe when they talk about generational thinking. We do like to talk generational zeitgeists here on Trending in Ed. So I was happy to see Chuck Klosterman write a book about it. He also voices it himself, which shout out to any author who is voicing their book in addition to writing it. Uh, you know, recently we featured Annie Duke's interview here on Trending in Ed, where she also voiced Thinking in Bets. It's also really interesting as an interviewer to talk to someone after you've just listened to them voice their own book. It's a pretty deep conversation right from Jump which uh, which is striking so maybe we'll talk to chuck's people see if we can get them get him lined up for down the line and that's about it one other quick point before we wrap today's show i have had some outreach from listeners who are interested in appearing on the show which is fantastic we're lining up a couple of those interviews already if you are someone who is interested in appearing on trending in ed Email me at mike at palmer.media. I'll get back to you, uh, at least check in. And if possible, we'll line you up for a conversation. You'll be appearing as a guest on a show. It'd be nice to get a, a cross-section of folks who listen and are continuing to support us along the ride. And with that, we're going to wrap this episode up. Welcome to the future. It's August 2022. This is Trending in Ed's 490th episode. We are T minus 10 from episode 500. Thank you so much for listening. Check out our Substack 
palmermedia.substack.com. We try to summarize what's going out across all the different podcast feeds and programming innovation that's happening. Also, if you're interested in reaching out to me and my associates for consulting work, that's also Mike at Palmer.media. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode of Trending in Education. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back again soon. Do all the good things. Thank you.